Hey guys, uh, we were discussing <laughs> on Facebook again about uh, pet cocks and why the stock ones uh, tend to leak. And so I'm going to show you a fix for these guys. The main problem is um, there's where the this is a broken one. I'm just going to show you um, what happens is that four hole rubber rubs against this part. And uh, with the water in there and whatever else, you do get some corrosion and you get some wear around this edge. So anything rough at all is going to wear that uh, four hole, brand new four hole rubber out. So um, I'm going to show you how I prep these guys. Uh, so that's greatly reduced or just never stops. I'm, the ones I've fixed have uh, stayed non-leaking for a couple of decades now. So... But you can see, I'm going to do some other stuff here, but uh, this is what this one looks like at first. It's got a little bit of wear, and so uh, in a bit I'll show you how to do a couple of fixes. Okay, now I'm just, since this didn't have any corrosion, I'm just going to pretend it did. Uh, you can take a look at yours. If it's got any kind of uh, corrosion on it, uh, that's going to cause problems, so that needs to be filled. Come on, focus, baby. Um... That needs to be filled up but uh, if you just put a thin layer of you know the steel epoxy or whatever it's going to come out most likely so what you have to do is actually grind it deep try to get some undercuts in there uh, so it actually has something to hold on to instead of just a real thin layer you actually want a thicker layer you can either even take uh, some very small drill bits and drill some divots in there to hold the uh, compound in so uh, I'm pretending this was uh, uh, corroded and so uh, I'm going to do this repair with uh, JB Weld which is just uh, steel filled um, uh, epoxy okay guys here's a little trick um, to make it a little bit easier once the uh, epoxy is not hardened all the way but still a little bit soft you can take a sharp exacto or a razor blade and without pushing down which is going to cause a divot just lightly just you can just cut the uh, excess off the top it'll leave it a little bit high but it'll save you from sanding too much on the piece that's a big problem you don't want to take too much metal off the top because then your spring tension kind of goes low so you want to uh, just not remove much metal just polish but uh, so that's a little trick I learned uh, to save some time and uh, make sure everything comes out even Okay guys, now that the epoxy has dried, what I like to do is kind of like machining dye. Um, I just use a Sharpie magic marker, permanent marker, and I mark the whole face. Now, it depends on how bad uh, this is uh, grooved or whatever, so I'll usually start very lightly with uh, on a piece of glass. This is machined aluminum with uh, wet and dry. And I can't do this one-handed, but uh, so you just do a little figure eight and check for the high spots. Like I said, you don't want to do it too much because you don't want to take too much material off of this. That reduces the spring pressure on it. So I'll do this and show you what happens in a second. Okay, so I've barely started. Like I said, really no push, just lightly. And you can see where this isn't even flat. So uh, uh, you want to get most of this out like I said don't need to move too much material and then go to your 600 or finer to get um, get this little gal flat now it didn't take much sanding at all like I said do it in a figure eight pattern light pressure you're not trying to remove metal just flatten it um, now you can see the middle where it's still dark but that doesn't matter you're just worried about where the uh, four hole gaskets runs so I got that pretty much cleaned up. Now I'm going to finish it off with 600 and then polish. Okay, now with a bit of 600, uh, you can see where almost all the black's gone. You can see the repair is. You're actually sanding that uh, repair along with the uh, metal to make a flat surface so there's nothing to catch on the rubber and tear it up. So next step is polish. Okay, guys, all done. Um, now I just use a small little buffing wheel on my Dremel and uh, you can use a big buffing wheel if you're really careful like I said you want to 
do the minimal use. I use Zam, which is one step coarser than uh, White Diamond, if you have any of that. If not, get some Colgate toothpaste, because it's got uh, very fine polishing particles in it, and you can use that. Um, you can buff it that way, or you can put some on uh, on uh, a piece of the, the wrong side of sandpaper and buff it out that way. Um, like I said, do the bare minimum. As you can see, I didn't, I barely polished it all, but you can see my reflection in there. So, um, see, there's nothing there for to catch and tear up the O ring or the four holer. Uh, uh, one other thing, um, I got this here. This is from an aircraft company supplier. It's called Easy Turn Fuel Resistant Lubricant. Now, gas will not eat this, so this is a good lubricant for this, but you don't want to glob it on there. If you do, it could get in a fuel line and block it off because the gas will never uh, never dissolve it. So what you want to do is just run a very, very light, light coat on, uh, on here and maybe a little bit around the gasket. So, But as you can see, it doesn't take much work. Now this will, again... You won't have any wear on the four holer and this is exactly why people have problems when they rebuild their uh, petcocks because it's going to leak past that and tear up the gasket if it's not that flat so hope this helped guys and kind of uh uh if you like to use the stock petcocks i always use the stock ones um i don't like forgetting to turn the gas off or i don't like it flooding out because of bad needles or whatever so hopefully this little video will help and uh have a good one, guys. See ya.